Attila, before we pursue this wanton bloodshed any further, we request that you come personally to a meeting with Pope Leo I in Rome. Zacher. Barlachtschön. Timo. Timo. Attila, might I have a word with you in private, please? The city of Aquileia at the tip of the Adriatic was wiped off the face of the earth. The fugitives from that pitiful city took refuge among the islands, marshes, and lagoons at the head of the Adriatic Sea, and there founded a state that afterward grew into the Republic of Venice. But what of the Pope? I asked. No one knows what Saint Leo said to the Honey King, but that very day Attila turned his army around and started back for the Hun lands on the Danube. Attila the Hun died shortly thereafter. Since he had failed to claim Rome, he could not have Honoria, and instead brought another wife into his harem. On his wedding night, Attila suffered a nosebleed and choked to death. For a man who had boasted that, where my horse has trodden, no grass grows, it was a curiously anticlimactic death. The Hunnic warriors cut their hair and gashed their faces so that the king should be lamented, not by tears of maidens, 
but by the blood of warriors. Attila's bloody reign of conquest lasted only eight long years. Father Armand was silent for a long time. He glanced over at the head on a stake. A Hunnic trophy, he said. I think the man was a Visigoth. He died at the Battle of the Catalonian Fields. I keep it here so that I may see it every day and remember. Remember what, father? I asked him. The scent of a burning village. The sound of butchery. The way peasants would flee before the Hun riders. The way we would ride them down. The way it felt to conquer alongside Attila and the Huns. He leaned so close, I could feel his breath. Sometimes, I miss it. <laughs>